There can be little doubt that one of the earliest and most useful tools known to mankind is the knife. Spend an hour walking across any ploughed field in the south of Britain and you're sure to find at least one Neolithic flint blade. During the Bronze Age, a bronze blade became a highly prized tool and a symbol of wealth. The excavated burial chambers of Iron Age chieftains frequently contained knives as part of the valuable burial goods thought to be essential to the deceased in the afterlife. But it was, as far as we know, the Romans who created what has become known today as the multi-tool. Dated to around 250 AD and part of the Fitzwilliam Museum collection in Cambridge, England, this artefact was excavated at a site in the Mediterranean and is strikingly similar to a multi-bladed tool of the modern era, very much like one described in the classic 1851 novel Moby Dick, where a device is described as Sheffield contrivances, assuming the exterior, though a little swelled, of a common pocket knife but containing not only blades of various sizes but also screwdrivers, corkscrews, tweezers, awls, pens, rulers, nail files and countersinks. Reading that description one would be hard pressed not to picture a classic Swiss army knife. Ask any Swiss citizen what it is that defines their country and like a native of any other land they'll probably have a thousand different definitions of what makes Switzerland feel Swiss to the Swiss. Ask someone from outside the country what Switzerland means to them and the definitions become far narrower. You're likely to hear about banks, skiing, Toblerone chocolate, ill-gotten gold and no doubt the Swiss army knife. Skiing is fun, chocolate is for some one of your five a day and the gold is a subject for another time but the Swiss army knife now that has become so ubiquitous across the globe that there can be only a very few people who have not heard of one. But the modern multi-bladed Swiss army knife owes its origins to war and the equipping of soldiers in defence of their country and in particular to a specific model of gun used by the Swiss army in the 19th century. By the late 1880s, the Swiss infantry had been issued with the M1889 service rifle. In order to clean the rifle, as all good soldiers are equipped to do, it was necessary to disassemble it and to disassemble it required a screwdriver. The army also relied upon rations contained in tins, so a single device that allowed them to maintain their weapon, open their rations and provide a few tools for other everyday activities seemed a logical idea. But in the 1880s, no Swiss manufacturer had the production capacity required to produce a knife with the required blades and in the quantity the Swiss army required them. This meant that the first ever multifunctional knife issued to the Swiss army came from the German manufacturer Wester & Co, a company of cutlers that had been producing high quality military swords since the first quarter of the 19th century. In fact, many of the swords used by the Confederacy during the American Civil War were manufactured by the Wester Company. In October of 1891, the Swiss Army took delivery of 15,000 of Wester's folding knives that were equipped with a single knife blade, a screwdriver, can opener, a reamer and were bound with dark oak scales. The scales are attached to either side of the knife and make it more comfortable to hold. The knives were named the Model 1890. They were well built, easy to use and easy to carry and soon became a staple part of every Swiss soldier's kit. Whether from a sense of patriotism or from a more commercial stance, a year later, the owner of a Swiss surgical equipment manufacturing company, Karl Elsner, decided to make the required knives in Switzerland and took over full production by the end of 1891. With Elsner's expertise in the making of precision surgical tools, he was not satisfied with the design of the model 1890, so set about to improve it. By 1896, he had designed a folding knife in which the tools were attached upon both sides of the handle and held in place with a spring mechanism. This spring was used to hold the tools from both sides in place and also allow twice the number of blades to be held within the same knife. In 1897, Elsner registered his design at the patent office as the Officers and Sports Knife, and as well as the established blades, it also sported a corkscrew and a second, smaller cutting blade. But Elsner's company were not the only ones to have received a commission from the Swiss Army. 
1893, the Cutlers, Paul Beauchat and Company, also received a contract to produce the Model 1890 folding knives. To differentiate between the two, when advertising their respective products, Beauchat used the line, the genuine Swiss army knife. But as Elsner had produced the first Swiss made knives under contract for the Swiss army, they used the advertising lead, the original Swiss army knife. In 1895, the company of Paul Beauchat was acquired by a group of entrepreneurs who engaged one Theodore Wenger to oversee the operation and in 1897 renamed the company Wenger & Co. Then, as today, every Swiss man is required to attend national military service and at the beginning of that service he receives one of the famous knives as part of his military kit. So it was that Elsner and Wenger decided, with the agreement of the Swiss Army, that they would split the contract evenly between them, half going to the Wenger company in the German-speaking region of Switzerland and half going to Elsner's company in the French-speaking region. In 1909, Karl Elsner decided to rename his company. His mother, Victoria Elsner, had recently died, so he renamed the company Victoria in her memory. In 1921, Elsner's Victoria Company began to use stainless steel in their manufacturing process for the very first time, so he amended the company name. He took his mother's name, Victoria, and the term for stainless steel in the Swiss-French dialect, Acier Oxidable, and made a portmanteau from those names that remains to this day one of the most famous names in quality knives, Victorinox. The contract to supply these knives to the Swiss military continued to be shared by Wenger and Victorinox for 97 years until, in 2005, Victorinox acquired the knife manufacturing side of the Wenger company. If you'd mentioned the term Swiss Army Knife to anyone prior to the advent of World War II, it is likely that no one would have the slightest idea of what it was you were referring to, including the average Swiss citizen. The knives were almost unknown outside of Switzerland, and perhaps parts of France and Germany, and those who were familiar with the multiple bladed pocket knives knew them by their original name, Schweizer Offiziersmesser, meaning literally Swiss Officer's Knife. The Allied troops who encountered these impressive little tools immediately realised the benefit of owning one, but had difficulty in pronouncing Schweizer Offizier's Messer. So instead, they used a rough English translation, and the term Swiss Army Knife was born. After the Allied victory of World War II, soldiers returned to their homelands, and many of those soldiers, particularly the GIs returning back to the United States, took these small knives home with them. Friends and family who were shown the knives also realised the practical value of owning such a tool and this drove the demand for a civilian version of the Swiss Army knife. And when the knives became available in the US military's post exchange, which is roughly equivalent to the British naffy shops, their popularity skyrocketed. Even US presidents came to recognise the utility of the Swiss Army knife, with every president since Lyndon B. Johnson issuing a personal special guest to the White House with an original Victorinox Swiss Army knife. Although the Swiss Army has only ever used eight different models of the knife since 1890, they have been in excess of 100 different variations of the knife made by both Wenger and Victorinox specifically for civilian use. Campers, hikers, anglers, hunters and many other active groups can find a knife specifically designed for the needs encountered within their particular pastime, some of which are extremely specialised. For example, there is a range of Swiss Army knives for IT technicians which contains a varied range of specialised interchangeable driver tips and a magnifying glass. Another has an integrated USB stick and even incorporates a biometric fingerprint reader to secure the memory against theft. And for the motivated hiker and outdoor enthusiast, there is the Traveller Light, which not only has a selection of tools focused towards hiking and camping, but also comes with a multifunction digital display featuring a clock, alarm, thermometer, altimeter, stopwatch, countdown and barometer. It even comes supplied with a small LED torch. But perhaps the most mission-specific of any Swiss Army knife model was found in the 1961 military-issued knife. This model had the usual drop-point blade, a reamer, a blade combining a bottle opener, screwdriver and wire stripper, and a combined can opener and small head screwdriver. 
But what set this particular model apart was the addition of a brass spacer, which allowed the knife with a screwdriver and the reamer extended simultaneously to be used to assemble the SIG 550 and SIG 510 assault rifles, then in use by the Swiss military. The knife served as a restraint against the firing pin during assembly of the lock. The 1961 military issue knife was also the first to bear the Swiss emblem of the cross, which is now on all models of the knife. The Swiss army knife became regarded as such a useful and important tool within the Swiss military that Victorinox have since accepted commissions to create multi-bladed folding knives for the armed forces of several nations, including the USA, Germany and Malaysia, although the British army have so far resisted the lure of the Swiss army knife and still issue its recruits with a British army jackknife in a design that has remained almost unchanged since 1850. Since World War II, the Swiss Army Knife has become a cultural icon, and the term Swiss Army Knife has even entered popular culture to mean anything that is useful and adaptable. With such cultural importance, with its reputation for engineering precision, quality, sheer indispensability, and with so many different models available, both historically and currently, a huge interest has developed towards Swiss Army Knives in the private collector's markets. The Victorinox company has recognised this and every year creates its high quality knives in limited editions that are quickly sold out to keen collectors. Some collectors might concentrate on the Allox range of Swiss Army knives. Allox stands for aluminium oxide and the anodized aluminium scales, the finish on either side of the knife, come in a vast variety of colours, patterns, designs and textures. Those who collect the Allox range tend only to collect the Allox range. Other collectors might concentrate on vintage knives, and amongst those vintage collectors, there are even more specific categories. Some might collect pre-1927 knives with the wooden scales. Some concentrate on the knives made using the latest celluloid handles, while others might only look for pre-1957 knives with nickel-silver spacers between the blades instead of the later brass spacers. Some collect the Wenger-issued knives, but most do consider Victorinox to be the superior. Most collectors will want an example of the 1891 Beauchamp and Company knife, or one of the three models available between 2002 and 2005 that boasted an inbuilt butane lighter. The Swiss flame model, being the most sought after, can change hands for over £700 due to the low numbers produced since it was not available in the United States market due to safety concerns about the lighting mechanism. There are even current models that are way beyond the pocket of most ordinary collectors, such as the Swiss Army Swiss Champ XAVT. It has 83 different functions, weighs a full 13 ounces and comes with a £450 price tag and, due to its size, can be considered at the very limit of a practical tool. But they go bigger. The Wenger 16999 is recognised by the Guinness Book of Records as the world's largest Swiss Army knife. It was produced to celebrate the centenary of Wenger's Swiss Army knife production and boasts a colossal 141 functions from 87 implements, and it showcases almost every blade that has ever been produced for a genuine Swiss Army knife. It is 9 inches wide and weighs in at a staggering 3 pounds in weight. The Wenger 16999 is so extreme that it has generated a huge number of often hilarious spoof reviews on Amazon. A Swiss Army Knife collector who concentrates on knives that are practical and easily portable would not consider adding the £3,500 Wenger 16999 Centenary Edition to their collection. But amongst the most desirable of the more practical knives is the Victorinox Master Craftsman, or more accurately, a variant edition of it. The original Master Craftsman was introduced in 1973 and was popular due to its large complement of tool functions in a compact design. In 1978, NASA ordered 50 of these knives, intended for use by astronauts aboard the upcoming space shuttle missions. In 1985, Edward Payton, the brother of astronaut Gary Payton, sent a letter to Victorinox asking about getting one of the now discontinued Master Craftsman knives after seeing the one his brother used in space. 
This prompted Victorinox to issue a special edition, celebrating their small contribution to the space program. The result was the Space Shuttle model, issued in 1986 and sporting a metal inlay of the Space Shuttle within the scales. In 1989, another space-themed Master Craftsman knife was produced in limited quantities to celebrate the 20th anniversary of the Apollo moon landings, this one having a metal inlay of an astronaut. It is said the value of an item can be calculated as its monetary cost weighed against the value of its usefulness. Swiss Army knives are surprisingly inexpensive considering the precision engineering of their manufacture and the quality of the components used, and the utility is without question. Whatever model, from whatever era, the Swiss Army knife has become not just a necessity for many people, but a cultural icon, known and trusted by people from across the globe. But let's not forget the origins of this iconic tool. Were it not for the fear of war, the Swiss Army knife would not have emerged from the pain of progress.